Hey POV fam, welcome back to my channel. I'm Chrissy and this is POV fam reacts. On my channel I review books, music, articles, celebrity news, celebrity gossip, juicy reality TV, some of my favorite trash that I have no shame admitting I love to watch. Um, and this week I've got, I just purchased a new Mac Airbook and I'm trying to figure out how to sync it to my phone so that I can actually show you what I'm reading and have it on the screen at the same time. I'm not the world's biggest techie person. I think I'm too old for that, but it's another story. Um, anyway, but I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning through YouTube videos and I'm learning through my kids teaching me. So we're gonna start off this first little segment here of not so great celebrity news. Um, I'm gonna start with the Carter boys. Uh, Aaron Carter passed away, I'm sure most of you know, about a month or so ago now from what's considered a suspected drug overdose. Now, it was well known for many, many years that Aaron Carter had a drug problem. And the last interview I saw of him, I believe was E! News, was him stating that he himself was hope sober, excuse me, and that he was in treatment and actively working the program and was doing great. He was living with his girlfriend and they have a son who at the time of the interview was seven months old, but I just read that Prince, his son, uh, just turned one right after Aaron's passing, which is really sad. Um, Prince is in the custody of his grandmother on the mom's side. So why the mom doesn't have custody of Prince, I don't know. To be honest with you, I kind of felt like at this point they deserve a little privacy, so I didn't go digging much deeper than that. But we're waiting on the final toxicology reports and I guess we'll see what comes from that. Now, if you see me glancing to the side, it's because my MacBook's over here and I've got all the stories pulled up that I wanna go over with you. And I promise I will figure this out and we will be able to both be seeing the same thing at the same time, but cut me a break here because I'm new to this. Okay, uh, Nick Carter, also in the news this week, uh, if you haven't heard, is now being charged with and accused of, wait, let me get that back. I want to say the right thing because I don't want to be wrong. He has a lawsuit filed against him from a sexual assault in 20, 2001. Wow, that far back. An incident that happened after a Backstreet Boys concert. Now, I'm not going to read the whole story because it kind of goes on and on. And this is from Yahoo News. I read one from Rolling Stone. I went from E! News. I mean, it's it's pretty big everywhere. So if you don't just want to listen to this and you want to go look for some other things, go dig in. It's not going to be hard to find. Okay, it says, gosh, I don't even know if I can use some of these words on YouTube, but here goes nothing. Okay, it says, Nick Carter has been accused of raping a woman and giving her HPV. That's an STD. Uh, it said, while he was touring with the Backstreet Boys in a new civil lawsuit, as a result, ABC is no longer going to air the group's planned special, A Very Backstreet Holiday, on December 14th. Now, uh, I know that I've seen everywhere that uh, BSB has put out a holiday CD, and it might be their first one, I think is what I read. So they've been hyping this big time, and now ABC went, pulled the plug, and... Uh, Sorry guys, no Backstreet Boys holiday special. It says that the girl's name in the lawsuit is Shannon, but she goes by Shay Ruth. She's currently 39. She said that Carter sexually assaulted her in 2001 when she was 17 in Tacoma, Washington. Ruth said she waited for an autograph and Carter invited her onto the I Want It That Way Hitmakers tour bus. Okay. And then it says, at the news conference, Ruth and her legal team, lawyer Mark J. Bosovic, said that once his client Carter had and Carter were on the bus, the star gave her a funny tasting beverage that he called the VIP juice. Carter then allegedly took her to the bathroom on the bus, told her to get on her knees, pulled down his pants, exposed his yeah, I'm gonna leave that one blank because I don't even know if I can say it, but you know what I mean. Um, and ordered her to perform sexual acts on him. To under, under duress, apparently Shay said she cried through the whole thing, but did what she felt she had to do. Uh, the singer then allegedly 
took her to a bed in the back of the bus and raped her as she cried. Now, this is her statements that her lawyer is presenting. We don't have any proof on this yet. Um, Nick does have a reply. I'm getting to that. Afterwards, Ruth threatened to tell people what had happened and Carter grew very angry. He grabbed and screamed at her, calling her names. She recalled him telling her that no one's going to believe her story and that she's going to go to jail. I guess he figured he was super popular. This was 2001. And they were like right at the very top of their career at that point. Bosovic said his team had spoken to three other women, claiming Carter had both sexually assaulted and infecting them with another STD. Okay. Uh, he noted that Ruth is on the autism spectrum and has a mild case of cerebral palsy. Now, they're bringing that up, I'm assuming, and this is just me, but I'm assuming that they're going to say since she's on the spectrum, it's possible that she wasn't quite aware of her situations and surroundings around her. Maybe it had been the first time she'd ever had alcohol. Maybe she wasn't aware of the don't, drink something, you don't know who gave it to you, you don't know what could be in it. Of course, we are now in 2022 and most women know when you go to bars, you don't leave an empty glass, you don't walk away, you don't do anything like that. Your bestie can watch your glass or you can dump it or get another one, but you never take one from a stranger and you never leave it unattended. So maybe she drank it because also he was Nick Carter and how cool you're on his tour bus and stuff. So lots of girls, regardless of whether you have autism or not, would probably have gone on the bus. The fact that she had cerebral palsy, maybe they're making that point to say that she was not physically able to fight him off because she has a muscle disease of some kind. This is my opinion. This is my channel. This is what I'm reacting to. So let's keep going. Um, she said from the podium, hello, my name is Shay and the last 21 year old, 21 years, excuse me, have been filled with pain, confusion, frustration, shame, and self-harm as a direct of Nick Carter raping me. Even though I'm autistic and live with and live with cerebral palsy, you said that. Okay, these articles obviously we, we know they before they've got typos, they repeat themselves, misspellings, the whole thing. Okay, whatever. So yeah, um, I believe it has had a lasting effect on me that has impacted my life in the way and what Nick Carter has said and done to me. So that statement is a little bit. Uh, Let's just say grammatically incorrect, but hey, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people who's a, a grammar snob, so I, I take that back if it offends anybody, sorry. Uh, my motivation for coming forward today and filing this lawsuit is to stop Nick Carter from assaulting more teens and women. Ruth said, I know that I wasn't the only woman that Nick Carter did this to. Now, how she knows that, don't know. Um, the beginning of the article said that there were other women who have come forward. Now we know from previous cases, like the uh, Manson case, that um, Evan Rachel Wood and her little groupie of friends there, they all got together and sat down. In fact, they did that Phoenix Rising, I believe it was called, HBO docuseries about uh, Marilyn Manson and uh, all the things that they experienced. And they sat down and basically compared notes and filled in the blank if, well, if that happened to you, it must have happened to me, but maybe I don't remember. And so that's a whole another story we can check out another time, or you could even go to other channels and look up the Manson cases and you will see all that. So the fact that she says she knows that she wasn't the only other woman that Nick did this to, unless she was in the presence of someone else, I'm gonna say right now, I need proof to follow up on that statement. Uh, if anything, the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial taught me is that as a former Me Too stand-up kind of girl, um, I've now come to realize that not everybody is the most truthful and people have agendas, And um, but the truth does prevail. And uh, Johnny, I'm so glad you won. I just, oh, Amber, 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 a whole other story. We don't even want to go there. Okay. Let's get back to Nick Carter. It said the incident was supposedly took place more than 20 years ago. Well, if anybody knows anything about law, we know that that is now outside the jurisdiction of the statute of limitations. So this lawsuit is filed in Nevada County and is seeking punitive and compensatory damages. That's because she can't file criminal charges on them. We've been down the road of compensatory and punitive damages, i.e. Depp versus Heard. Okay, in 2017, 
dream singer Melissa Schumann accused Carter of having sexually assaulted her in 2003. Carter said at the time that what had happened between them was consensual, and the L.A. County DA's office declined to investigate whether the case warranted charges because the statute of limitations had passed. Once again. Okay, so if this time Carter says what happened between them was consensual, this was 2003, it clearly doesn't say she was a minor or that would have been a problem. Even with statute of limitations, they would have come forward and said that. Um, after Ruth's allegations were made public on Thursday, ABC, we said, pulled the Backstreet Holiday. Okay, now I'm going to go back into my Instagram and I'm going to pull up where I can find Nick's comment and reply to all of this. Okay, yeah, we know that. You know he's being sued. Okay, here we go. I found it, folks. All right. Nick Carter denies rape allegation as ABC pulls the Backstreet Boys holiday special. <laughs> I think we've said that like five times now. Okay, we get it. Uh, Backstreet Boys member Nick Carter is being sued by a 39-year-old woman with autism and cerebral palsy who says he raped her as a teenager in the group's tour bus of 2001. All right, so far. That line matches, so let's see what else we get. Shannon Shea Ruth filed sexually battery, she filed, here we go again, folks. How much money do you get paid to write an article and uh, grammar? Not your thing. Okay, maybe they ought to install that, what the heck's it called, Grammarly? That's it, Grammarly. I think my new sponsor, new sponsor should be Grammarly. Check me out, uh, hit me up. Okay, Shannon Shea Ruth filed a sexual battery lawsuit in County Clark, Nevada, on Thursday, in which she claims that Carter gave her alcohol, assaulted her. Yeah, 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 we heard in Tacoma. That's nothing new. I want to see what Nick has to say about this. That's really what we're here for. Okay, no criminal charges have been filed against the alleged assault. Of course, we know because of statute of limitations. Um, during a press conference held in Beverly Hills, California on Thursday, Ruth said, the last 21 years have been filled with pain, confusion, frustration, shame, and self-harm as a direct result of Rick Carter, Rick, excuse me, Nick Carter raping me. Same quote, must have been same press conference. Okay, it says Carter faced similar allegations in 2017. Yeah, we read that, Melissa Schumann. Yeah, no, 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 no. Come on, I just want to get to where Nick's response is. That's really all we're here for. Uh, let's see. We all know that he has denied it. It's been all over the media that he and his representatives have said that A, the first charge from Shea is false allegations. He never brought her on the tour bus. He doesn't even know who she is. He never gave her any VIP juice. And we just learned that the person, Melissa Schumann, who was a pop singer, that accused him of raping her at 15, 15 years prior, Carter said the allegations at the time in a statement provided to CNN. Here we go, here's his response. Melissa never expressed to me while we were together or at any time since that, anything we did was not consensual. Carter said in a statement, we went on to record a song and perform together and I was always respectful and supportive of Melissa, both personally and professionally. Okay, well, there we go with Nick and the Carter boys. Uh, so, hasn't been the best month for them. Um, Nick, I have to say I'm pulling for you. Um, I don't wanna be one of those people who say um, a woman accuses a man and automatically, guy's guilty, doesn't matter, no proof, Amber, speaking to you, um, no. I'm going to need a little more than a press conference um, and some lawyer verbiage speaking on the situation. It's, that's just not going to be enough for me. So let's see what happens with this case. Now, another sad news this week. Gosh, it's been a horrible recording already with just sad news, but I'm going to get to some funny stuff. I promise. I promise. Okay. Um... I don't know how many of us know about this, but Celine Dion came forward uh, Thursday, which was, wow, just yesterday, um, and she did a live Instagram and said that she's pretty sure her singing career is over. And that is because she has been diagnosed with a very rare neurological disorder, 
pretty sure if I pull this article up, it says one in a million people suffer with this non neurological disorder. It says Celine Dion has stiff person syndrome, a rare neurological disorder. So let's check out what that says it is. In a video posted Thursday, excuse me, addressing the future of her world tour, Celine Dion shared she's been diagnosed with stiff person syndrome. Ooh. The Canadian singer said that the rare neurological disorder is what's been causing her to have severe muscle spasms, affecting her ability to walk and sing. I can't imagine because her voice is absolutely purely angelic. Um, I don't know if there's anybody else that can compare to Celine. Um, if you've got an opinion and you think differently, drop me a comment below. Um, I'd like to see what other people think. The diagnosis means that she will have to postpone much of her tour as well as cancel future shows. The spasms affect every aspect of my daily life, sometimes causing difficulties when I walk and now I'll let me to use my vocal cords at all to sing the way I am used to. Dion said in the video posted on Instagram, I have to admit it's been a struggle. All I know is singing. It's what I've done all my life. Now, folks, uh, Celine's had it rough. I remember I lived in Florida about 11 years ago, and I lived in Melbourne, which was north of Jupiter, where Celine and her husband, Renee Angelil, had a huge ranch where they lived. And at the time, it was all over celebrity news that she was trying to get pregnant, couldn't get pregnant, um, and used IVF procedures to get pregnant to have her first son, Renee Charles, and then she went on to have twins but very difficult pregnancies. They were very difficult on her. I wonder now if it's possible this genetic disorder that she had had any impact on her pregnancies. I don't know. I can do some digging. Maybe that's just for my own personal information because I'm nosy like that. Um, anyway, um, then her husband, Rene Angelil, who was significantly older than her, uh, came down with throat cancer and he went under chemo and radiation and was told he was in remission. And then shortly thereafter, um, he was re-diagnosed with cancer. Um, and at the end, he was very, very ill. I never remember reading and seeing on TV that he was being fed through a feeding tube. He could no longer speak. He was bedridden. And she basically dedicated her entire life to taking care of her three children, then as well as her husband. And that was very sad. And he passed away. And she has been single as a single mom since then i don't think i've ever seen that she's gone on dates or been in any other relationship um, she's looked very very sick for a long time now people have thought she had an eating disorder uh, but maybe it was a mental it wasn't mental maybe it was a physiological type of situation or something genetic as this is a genetic disorder that occurs in one in a million like i said um, it said dion said she needs to focus on her health now and is working with a great team of doctors she hopes to perform again in the future. It's not guaranteed that she says that. Stiff person syndrome, here we go. This is what I'm looking for. Stiff person syndrome is a rare neurological disorder that affects one or two in a million. Oh, okay, good for me, I remembered something. According to John Hopkins Medicine, the disease notably causes progressive muscle stiffness and muscle spasms, treatments focusing on relieving symptoms. Now, I've read some pretty nasty things about this disease. Okay, here. It's a disease that's characterized by progressive muscle stiffness, muscle spasms, rigidity, typically in the muscles of the back, specifically the lower back, as well as the upper legs. Yale Medicine Neurologist Assistant Professor of Neurology who specializes in neuromuscular diseases told the USA Today. Now, it can affect other muscles, including muscles in the arms, as well as speaking, which is obviously her moneymaker, that voice of hers, that angelic voice of hers, um, and swallowing. That's going to be a big problem. Um, yeah, swallowing. Because without swallowing, you can't get nutrition, and then you end up on a G-tube, which it would be a uh, flashback to what Renee went through. Oh, God, this is just getting worse. Okay. Stiff man syndrome, or SPF, is a rare neurological disorder that features an autoimmune disease. Oh, okay, autoimmune. Again, I'm learning along with you guys. Disease causes progressive muscle stiffness. Yes, we said, and muscle spasms. Okay. The symptoms, they basically say the same thing, that muscle spasms beyond the control where your muscles lock and are so rigid you can sometimes not walk or swallow. 
Um, Celine says, I wish I could live a normal life. And I completely understand that. She's been through it, to say the least. Um, everybody, it says here, of course, SPS symptoms can range significantly from every patient's experience and it's unique. It's a spectrum of severity. Some people have mild spasms. Some people can have full dystonia. Now dystonia is where your muscles lock up really tight, where a part of the body almost becomes rigid to a board or like a statue. And that's where I read, I looked at it and I was like, no, stiff man syndrome. I know I've heard about that before. And so I checked around and um, I did look around at some other articles and they liken stiff man syndrome I'm sorry, it used to be called stiff man syndrome. Now it's stiff person syndrome or yeah, stiff person syndrome, right? I guess we're going to be PC and take the man out and write person because it affects both genders. Okay. Um, it basically has been said to be called the statue disease um, where somebody's muscles become so rigid and the dystonia becomes so severe that people basically get like locked up like this. Um, their legs, their arms, their backs, they're wheelchair bound. And that's why they say they're like a statue. They can't swallow. They can't talk. They're believe from what I read. The sad thing is, is that your brain is still aware of everything going on around you. You just can't move your body. And that is absolutely terrifying to me. Um, I have sleep paralysis and that is terrifying. So I cannot imagine what it must be like if you have something like this for the long term. Um, and it just gets worse. So now I want to switch things up here and I want to get to some funny stuff. Like I said, this channel is just going to have a little bit of everything. So uh, you're going to go from laughing to maybe crying to both. Um, I hope this is entertaining you because I'm having a blast. So let's see what we got else we got here. Some of the stuff I found, I was just laughing myself at. Okay. Um, it's the holiday season. So let's let's read this because i thought hey come on really all right let's pull this one up here i don't even know like what possessed somebody to think of doing this but we want to know which classic christmas movies are actually super overrated okay everybody's gonna have their own opinion but let's see what we've got here from buzzfeed because we know they've got their own opinions about everything okay it's the most wonderful time of the year for the holiday movies. Good Lord. Uh, flip on the Hallmark Channel. You can binge watch a whole weekend's worth. Um, and let's see. A lady with a cell phone walks out of a door, bumps into a guy she knows from college or high school. They're both going back to the same place. They get snowed in. They get grounded. Their flights get grounded. Um, something along those lines, they end up taking a car back, they hated each other in school, or they liked each other but simply didn't know it and didn't say it to each other. You know, seen one, seen them all. Okay, so this one says, we all know the tried and true classic like A Christmas Story, Love Actually, and Home Alone. Yeah, I think we all know those. All right. But are these faves really as good as everyone thinks? Oh, let's see what they're talking about. Maybe you can't stand Buddy's shenanigans in The Elf. Or perhaps how the Grinch stole Christmas always ends up at the bottom of your watch list every season. Why is that so true? Like you run out of stuff to watch, so it's like, okay. Um, whatever it may be, you want to know which Christmas movie is actually just overrated, even if it must be an unpopular opinion for yourself. Okay. And then it gives you a bunch of gifts of... Um, Silly stuff with the Grinch. And what is the name of that movie? God, I know. I just saw it. Where the kid sticks his tongue to the pole outside. Um, I just saw it this past weekend. And I have to be honest with you. I was flipping channels. So I caught bits and pieces of every Hallmark movie that has ever been made. Um, every silly Christmas music video, movie, commercial. They're out there, folks. It's that time of the year. So those are just two examples. Oh, another one they're talking about is Tim Burton's hol uh, Christmas movie that he put out. And there's a bunch of comments in here. Here's one. The Night Before Christmas is a Halloween movie. It should not be played in the month of December. And I will do this and say this till the day I die. 
And someone says, Elf is a terrible movie. Will Ferrell's character is so, like, 95 O's. Annoying, and not in an endearing way. I spent the entire movie just wishing he would lose the ability to speak. <laughs> okay. A Christmas story. All the characters are annoying. I can't stand it. Let's see what else we've got. Sometimes the flipping comments are even funnier than, than the articles themselves. The live action Grinch Who Stole Christmas, I totally it totally betrays the real who's and who'sville. They're kind of loving and know the real meaning of Christmas. The Jim Carrey version makes them rude, self-centered, competitive capitalists. No thanks, I'll stick to a Cartian classic. <laughs> oh my God. Any Grinch that's not the original cartoon is trash. Ooh, all right. It's a wonderful life. Husband tries to kill himself because he thinks his family is better off without him. End. Period. With a T. Okay. Christmas Vacation. The only good vacation movie is the first one. Not this one. Take a vacation. Polar Express. Creepy. I agree with that one because it is kind of creepy. I don't know. Those like movies where they're animated but not quite animated and they kind of look real but not really look real. No, I'm not. I'm out. Um, let's see what else. I'm not going to spend forever on this, but it says love actually is actually the worst. Super problematic. It's complicated. <laughs> elf. It's elf. It's just elf. Um, oh my God, man, they're ripping up Will Ferrell. Oh my gosh. This is so funny. Home alone. Nothing says the holidays like abandoning your child. <laughs> Fighting off a home invasion. If you think Home Alone is a Christmas movie, Die Hard, but Die Hard isn't, then you have some rethinking to do. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. I don't get all the hype behind the Christmas story. It's just so stupid. In my opinion, the kids in it are annoying. I think that's the name. The Christmas, the Christmas story. That's where the kid sticks his tongue to the pole and it gets stuck. That's the part, the only part I ever remember of seeing the movie. I don't know how it is that I managed to flip the channels and every time find that one part where the kid's tongue is stuck to the pole. Okay, this last one says, I know It's a Wonderful Life is a beloved holiday classic and it does have a nice plot line, but the film is way too long. They could have cut out a third of it, like all the scenes showing George Bailey and his wife during the dating years. No need for that, not relevant, didn't care. And it still would have been a great movie. I also found George Bailey's emotional meltdown towards the end of the film very unnerving. <laughs> okay, thanks BuzzFeed for the laugh. We really use that one. And I think I'm going to end with something that was, um, this is also, just for fun, um, another thing to react to. And I want you guys to remember, leave me some comments. I want you to tell me like what you think is the worst Christmas movie or overrated or why you do like it. Either way, I want to know what you guys have to say. Um, let's see. I've got a bunch of stuff here saved, but I'm not going to use them all tonight because we want to be able to come back and do another one. Tomorrow I'm going to film again, so I'm going to find some more things. But okay, 16. All right, now I thought I saw one in here that was... Give me one second, guys. I passed what I wanted. We're going to get to the 2022 People's Choice Awards. Trust me. As soon as I can get my Mac to be able to show you what I'm looking at, we're going to do some hits and misses for sure because there was some bunch of them. Okay. Let's see. There is something in here about baby names that I thought was hysterical. Yes. Okay. This is by Nameberry a website named Nameberry. They just announced their 2023 baby name predictions. And it says, and I'm curious if you like them or not. So you let me know if, you're, if you like them, don't like them. If you're pregnant or adopting or a dad or a mom with a baby on the way, um, give me an idea of what you think about, <coughs> excuse me, some of these um, names. <laughs> There's a picture here of Ross and Rachel sitting on the couch and he says oh I like Ruth and she's and he says what about Ruth and he says Rachel says oh I'm sorry are we having a 90 year old and I wasn't aware 
I'm sorry. I don't know why I find that so funny. It's making me laugh and choke. Okay. So here we have the top baby name predictions for 2023. All right. They were recently released by Nameberry. So if you're looking to name your child, check out Nameberry. Not sponsored. Okay. All right. Alden. A-L-D-E-N. Maybe that's to replace Aiden that like was a thing, you know, many, many years ago, like maybe 10 or 11 years ago. <coughs> Sorry, this one got me again. Archie. I'm going to go with Prince. Oh, is he even a prince anymore? Let's just go with Henry, Harry, what's it? Harry, um, and Megan's first child, Archie. Okay. Like it, don't like it. You get to choose that one. Billy, B-I-L-L-I-E, for a boy or a girl. I think that's kind of cute. I think that's cute for a girl. Um, oh, okay. Breland, B-R-E-L-A-N-D. Breland? Breland? I don't know. If anybody has a kid out there named B-R-E-L-A-N-D, let me know. Is it Breland or Brayland? Like B-R-A-Y. And this is just a new funky 2023 way to spell it. Celeste. Okay. Um, hmm. Think about that one. I don't think I know anybody with that name. And hey, if it's your thing, go for it. Okay. No. No. Sorry. Cosmo. The only Cosmo I can think of is Cosmo Kramer. And we didn't even know his name in the episodes of Seinfeld until like, what, the last season or something like that? Cosmo. I would click don't like. Um... Elio, E-L-I-O. Again, I can't tell if some of these names, like Cosmo, I'm going to go with, I would imagine as a boy, or a guy, excuse me, a, a baby boy, guy name. But Elio, um, it ends in an O, so uh, maybe my four years of AP Spanish is going to give me an idea that that's supposed to be male, and it would be Elia if it was a girl with an A in the end. I don't know. Okay. No, sorry, no. Down thumb. Everest. Everest? Uh, did you get pregnant climbing Mount Everest? Um, because I don't get it. Why not Grand Canyon then? Uh, why not Himalaya? Why not Sahara Desert? So uh, no. Everest, sorry. Don't like. Halston. All right. All right. I can like that. Halston. It sounds very bougie too. Like, you know, perfumes and pocketbooks and maybe you could name one of your other kids Hermes or something like that. But Halston. Jolene. Okay, welcome back, Dolly Parton, because uh, Jolene, Jolene, don't steal my man. So, um, I don't know, I guess Jolene for 2023. Kind of cute, but um, hmm, I don't know. All right, oh gosh, oh gosh, folks. Uh -uh. No, Linus. Now, I know it's the holiday season, but all I can picture is some scruffy-looking kid carrying this beat-up-ass blanket around behind him that looks like it needs to be... Um, disinfectant, germified. Um, I'm a germaphobe, by the way, for those of you who really don't know me well. Um, I see freaking spheres of germs everywhere I look. I carry sanitizing wipes, Lysol spray, um, and every hand sanitizer ever known to man. Yeah, I've got it all. So Linus, no, thumbs down. Louise. All right, Louise. Sounds like somebody's grandmother's name, but you know, it's pretty. Maybe you could call her Lulu. Um, I don't know. Nope, sorry, another one, luxury. Okay, maybe you could have like Hermes, Luxury, Halston, and Prada. Four, all right, w w no, Luxury, no. <sighs> okay, I know Poppy's been a really popular name the last few years, but Marigold, Marigold, really? I'm just moving, I got, I got nothing else to say to that. Noah, well that's really, that's not anything new. I know lots of Noah's, particularly kids that are in like their teens, early 20s named Noah. And that probably comes from Dr. Noah Carter or Noah, what the heck was his name? He played Dr. Carter on ER. Noah Drake, was that his name? I don't know. I could be mixing up General Hospital and I could be mixing up ER, but I know his name was Noah. Whoever played, who, the guy who played Dr. Carter. His first name was Noah. So I like that. We'll go with that. All my other sidebars aside, I still like that. Oh my gosh. Okay. Omri, O-M-R-I. 
Omri. Sounds like a name Elon Musk would name his what? 13th, 14th kid maybe? Moving on. Romy. R-O-M-Y. Romy. Um, sounds like it could be a nickname for another name, but I can't tell. Is it going to be Romy? R-O-M-Y or Romy with a long O? R-O-M-Y. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Rose. I like that. I do like that. I like Rose. I like Helen. I like Lily. I do like some of the older names. And Rose is just such a pretty name. It, it just makes you think of a little girl with like curls in her hair and with bows and gingham dresses. Oh gosh, love that. So I'm going to go with Rose. Folks, Sayer, S-A-Y-E-R. Say what? That's the kid's going to be tortured for life if you name your kid Sayer. I can hear it now. He's going to be the kid with his tongue stuck to the pole at Christmas um, or all year if it's cold someplace. Because Sayer, I say not. Okay. Uh, Sunday. All right. I do know that Keith Urban and Nicole Kidman's daughter is Sunday Rose and they call her Sunny. So that's not so bad. But Sunday. What are you going to name your other kids? Friday? Uh, call her Fry. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, we'll move on. True. Well, we know where that came from. Chloe Kardashian's na daughter's name is True. T R U. Um, she's True Thompson, I think. That's the baby's last name from Chloe's baby daddy. Um, true. Whatever. The Kardashians, they all have weird names. Oh, oh, here's a favorite. Wild. W I L D E. Is that in Olivia Wilde? Because if you have a child and you name her Wild or him Wild, and then you have a girl, you could name her Olivia. And then if you really have two more, you can name one Harry and one Styles. But they broke up, so wrong. Well, you could still play the game. It'd be fun anyway. And finally, our website at BuzzFeed from the name predictions of Newberry is Yuna. Y-U-N-A. Yuna. Yuna Corn. Sorry, corny joke, but I just couldn't help it. Yuna Corn. No, Yuna. Um, I'm going thumbs down. But you know what? I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear what you have to think. I want to hear about what your take is on the Carters, um, what you feel about mental health. I really do like the fact that Backstreet Boys is doing a benefit concert on behalf of mental health and suicide prevention. Uh, as far as the Nick Carter thing goes, um, I think we need more information, at least I do, before I could say anything has happened. As far as a consensual relationship between two adults, at 18, she's still considered an adult. He was, what, 21, I think they said? So I'm going to toss that one aside. The other girl who said she was 15 with autism and uh, cerebral palsy, we're going to have to find about that. That's not even going to be criminal cases because statute of limitations, so... Okay, then we touched on Celine Dion, very sad, um, and Stiff's man, Stiff, there, I almost said it again, Stiff Persons Syndrome. Um, that's just terrible. It sounds horrific. It's terrifying, and I wish her the best. I wish her kids the best. They've been through hell and back, that family, um, to be so incredibly talented and then facing such a devastating future. I just wish her all the best because I just love her. I love her voice. I love her. I think she's an amazing person. And um, I just, that's horrible. Then we got to the funny stuff, the uh, funny overrated or underappreciated Christmas movies. Good Lord. Um, like I said, Elf ripped up. Uh, Jim Carrey and the Grinch ripped up. Wonderful Life. Could have done without half the movie. I pretty much have to agree with everything that was in that article. Uh, but let me know what you think is either the worst or best Christmas movie of the season that you like to watch. And uh, we know there's Hallmark watchers out there who binge even when it's Christmas in July. You know you are watching those movies. And you'll watch them over and over and over even when they come back in October and start their Christmas marathon again. You know you're out there. Um, and then we ended up with this funny... Um, wrapped it up with this funny Newberry names list, the predicted names for 2023. Um, I would have to say that for me, Rose, um, 
and Sunday I thought were cute because I could see Sunny or Sunday Rose, like I said, Nicole and Keith's daughter. Um, but some of them, no, no, just no. So um, thanks for watching my video and uh, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, turn your notification bells on. So every time I upload a video, you can hop here and see uh, my make newest information scoops whatever you'd like to say and uh, we'll do this again real soon uh, i also have some ideas i want to play some trivia games with you i found this really cool magazine that gives trivia questions um from like the i think from the 50s to the 90s if i remember correctly looking through it and i think that maybe i can give some questions and in the comment section you guys can give us or give me the answers and show each other what your thoughts are like um something from the 60s like name the kids of the Brady Bunch and they'll give you A with all the answers and then B one's wrong C you know typical stuff they tried to pull when we were in school like the A but not D but C but not E and F and all that crap but I'm going to make it easier because I'm going to give you four choices to choose from so that's on the on the uh, the list started reading the Matthew Perry autobiography so far I'm going to tell you all don't waste your money just don't um it's it's not as good as I thought it was going to be, and I'm kind of disappointed. He just seems very egotistical, narcissistic, and points the finger at everybody in his life as to why he screwed up. So save yourself some money. I'm going to finish reading that. I'll do a review on it. Um, but I also want to pull up some TikToks that I think are really funny and do some reactions to those. So uh, keep out your eye for the new content that will be coming. I'm going to try and get a lot more consistent with uploads. And like I said, I'm going to be working trying to synchronize my phone and my Mac so that we can all be watching the same stuff together at the same time. So thanks for joining me. I'll see you again soon. And I love you, POV fam. Take care. Bye-bye.